To thee we call, O Lord, our God. in this holy sacrifice and now please make an examination of conscience. Having confessed our sins unto God and asking for his forgiveness, let us recite the first act of confession. I confess to Almighty God, one in the Holy Trinity, who knows the innermost secrets of my heart, that I have sinned in thought, word, and deed, by my fault, by my fault, by my own great fault. In your presence, O God, I earnestly repent of all my sins, and I am truly sorry that I have offended you. Most loving Father, have mercy on me and forgive my sins. I resolve to amend my life, to improve and sanctify it, that I may become worthy to serve you faithfully all the days of my life. I ask the Blessed Mother Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy upon us, forgive us of our sins, and bring us unto life everlasting. May the Almighty and merciful, merciful Lord grant us pardon, absolution, and remission of our sins. Amen. May our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you, and with his authority vested in me by him, I absolve you of your sins. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. O oh God, you will again renew us. And your people will rejoice in you. Show us your mercy, Lord. And your salvation. Lord, hear our prayer. And our cry unto you. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Take our sins away from us, Lord, so that we might enter the Holy of Holies with purified hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. The law of the Lord is perfect refreshing the soul. The decree of the Lord is trustworthy, giving wisdom to the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The command of the Lord is clear, enlightening the eye. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Glory to who God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father. 
We worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, Holy Son of God, Mother, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer, for you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, your Son taught us that our inward disposition is far more important than our outward behavior alone. Help us to submit to all your precepts, not grudgingly, out of necessity, but because we acknowledge your love for us. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. On this, the 22nd Sunday in the Ordinary Time, we take the first reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses said to the people, Now Israel, hear the statutes and decrees which I am teaching you to observe, that you may live and may enter in and take possession of the land which the Lord, the God of your fathers, is giving you. In your observance of the commandments of the Lord your God, which I enjoin un upon you, you shall not add to what I command you, nor subtract from it. Observe them carefully, for thus will you give evidence of your wisdom and intelligence to the nations, who will hear of all these statutes and say, This great nation is truly a wise and intelligent people. For what great nation is there that has God so close to it as the Lord our Lord our God is to us whenever we call upon him? Or what great nation has statutes and decrees that are as just as this whole law? which I am setting before you today, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The gradual. He who walks blamelessly and does justice, who thinks the truth in his heart. He who does these things shall never be. The second reading for today is taken from the letter of St. James. Dearest brothers and sisters, all good things, all good giving, and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no alternation or shadow caused by challenge. He will to give us birth by the word of truth, that we may be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. Humbly welcome the word that has been planted in you and is able to save your souls. Be doers of the word and not only hearers, deluding yourselves. Religion that is pure and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to care for orphans and widows in their affliction and to keep oneself unstained by the word. World, this is the word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. Great is our Lord and mighty in power to his wisdom. There is no limit. Alleluia. Almighty and eternal God, who cleansed the lips of the prophet Isaiah with a burning coal, 
cleanse my heart and my lips through your gracious mercy, that I may worthily proclaim the Holy Gospel through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord be in my heart and on my lips, that I may worthily proclaim his Holy Gospel. The Lord be with you. And also with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. Glory be to you, O Lord. When the Pharisees with them, some scribes who had come from Jerusalem gathered around Jesus, they observed that some of his disciples ate their meals with unclean, and that is, unwashed hands. For the Pharisees, and in fact all Jews, do not eat without carefully washing their hands, keeping the tradition of the elders. And on coming from the marketplace, they do not eat without purifying themselves. And there are many other things that they have traditionally observed, the purification of cups and jugs and kettles and beds, so the Pharisees and the scribes questioned him, Why do your disciples not follow the tradition of the elders, but instead eat a meal with unclean hands? He responded, Well did Isaiah prophesy about you hypocrites, as it is written, The people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching us doctrine, human precepts. You disregard God's commandments, but cling to human tradition. He summoned the crowd again and said to them, Hear me, all of you, and understand. Nothing that enters one from outside can defile that person, but the things that come out from within are what defile. From within people, from their hearts, come evil thoughts, unchastity, theft, murder, adultery, greed, malice, deceit, lasciviousness, envy, blasphemy, arrogance, folly. All these evils come from within, and they despise. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to the Lord Jesus Christ. From within people, from their hearts, come evil thoughts. Unchastity, theft, murder, adultery, greed, malice, deceit, mischievousness, envy, blasphemy, arrogance, folly. All these things come from within, and they defile these words are taken from the Gospel according to St. Mark. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 
to you, my dear, dear brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus. I would like all of us to pause for a moment and consider that which defiles from within. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in, in his temptation in the wilderness for 40 days, had the temptation to question God and his power. Whether it be the changing of stones into bread, or being protected by God, or from the concept of having all the riches placed before Jesus, we too are like Jesus. We pray, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. There is a demon within each of us, and there is an angel within all of us. When the original sin took place, did it take place just outside of oneself? Or did it take place also within oneself? In the Gospel according to St. Saint, Saint Thomas, found in a papyrus known as the Hognamadi in Egypt in 1945, there is a conversation that takes place where Thomas says, Lord, when shall the fullness of the kingdom come? And Jesus said, when the, without, with, when the within shall be as the without. We pray, Lord, your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. Did not Jesus say that the kingdom of God exists within all of us? And is it just an external kingdom? Or is it a kingdom that would exist within us? Did not Jesus say, the kingdom of God is not observed outwardly, but rather, what did he say? The kingdom of God is where? Within. And so, my dear brothers and sisters, Jesus gives us a perfect example that is not necessarily in his time, but it is true in our time that that which is without can defile that which is within. Whether it be addiction to alcoholism or drugs, or the emotions of man, the bottom line is that we are called upon our Lord to what? Seek first the kingdom of what? God, and all things shall be added unto you. What Jesus tried to do was to point out to man that it is the integration, not so much of the outside but the within, which is the spiritual life of all individuals, that we come to understand what defilement is. If once has a true heart, and then did not Jesus say in his Beatitudes, blessed are the pure in heart for what? They shall see God. It is through our reaching out of being able to discern that which is temporary and that which is external, according to the words of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. He said, from within people, from their hearts come what? Evil thoughts. Comparison, judging, unforgiving, all those things that lessen us as people of Christ. And there are more serious that he pointed out, theft and murder and adultery and greed and malice, deceit. What about self-righteousness? The Pharisee and the publican. The Pharisee compared himself to the publican. He said, God, I thank you I'm not like other men. Even this guy. And what did the publican do? He did not even raise his eyes up to heaven, but he said, God, be merciful unto me, a sinner. And that's where we need to begin 
if we are truly committed unto our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to understand and discern that which takes us away from the kingdom and that which brings us closer unto the kingdom of God. And so, my dear brothers and sisters, may we seek to understand the wisdom of God that comes through the power of the Holy Spirit. And may that Spirit guide us not by our own thoughts as written in the book of Jeremiah, but rather on God's precepts. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the name of Jesus Christ be praised by all of us, now and forevermore. Amen.
sovereign, most holy trinity, which we make in remembrance of the passion, resurrection, and ascension of our Lord Jesus Christ, and in honor of the Blessed Virgin Mary and all the saints, that it may add to their honor and aid our salvation. May they, whose memories we honor here on earth, intercede for us in heaven through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that our gifts of love and sacrifice may truly be accepted this day by God, our Heavenly Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice in your hands and praise and glory in His name for our benefit and that of all souls in church. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious Father, as we present these gifts before you, we ask that whenever we struggle with the evil about us, whenever human traditions obscure our will, draw us to a more zealous obedience. We ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you, and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The whole Lord be with you. Lift up your horror hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. Give his thanks to give him praise. Father, all powerful and ever living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through his cross and resurrection, he freed us from sin and death and called us to glory that has made us a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, and a people set apart. Everywhere we proclaim your mighty works, for you have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. Therefore, we join the state with the angels and archangels, with all the saints and the entire church, and we lift our hymn of praise to your glory, repeating very humbly, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Please be seated. Most merciful Father, we humbly pray and ask you, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, to accept and to bless these gifts, these presents, these holy and spotless sacrifices, which we offer to you in the first place for your holy Catholic Church, that you would guide it in peace, defense, and unity throughout the whole world with its bishops and priests, and with all who profess the true orthodox and Catholic faith which comes to us from the apostles. Remember your servants, O Lord. In our prayers, let us remember the sick, the suffering and the dying, the hum hungry, the homeless, and the unemployed. For all those who are suffering from the coronavirus, to pray not only for their health, but for the health and well-being of their families. Let us ever be grateful for the doctors, the nurses, the first responders, and all health care workers who strive daily to save others. In our deepest prayers, let us remember all abused and neglected children in our world, as well as all abused and neglected animals and all those who, who suffer from 
violence, both here and abroad. In our prayers, let us continue to pray for all those soldiers, both male and female, who serve in our world, but most especially at this time in Afghanistan, that God would protect them and them by his holy angels. Let us also remember, dear Lord, one another, and pray through the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ that we might ever be brought closer in communion with him. And all here present whose faith and devotion are known to you for whom we offer or who offer up to you the sacrifice of praise for themselves and all their own, for the hope of salvation and deliverance and who freely choose to serve you, the living, eternal, and true God. We join in communion with and honor above all others, in memory of Mary, the glorious Virgin Mother of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, also your blessed apostles, martyrs, and confessors, together with all the countless number of saintly men and women of all nations, but especially of our nation, who live, suffered, and died for the glory of your name and the coming of your kingdom. May the remembrance of these praiseworthy people encourage us to follow their heroic example, making us worthy of your grace and love through the same Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We ask you, Lord, to graciously accept our offering and that of your whole family, and so order our days in your peace, that we may be saved from spiritual damnation and counted among the flock of your chosen people through Christ our Lord. Amen. O oh God, we ask you to bless, to accept, and to confirm this offering, and to make it pleasing unto yourself, so that it may be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit, and become for us the body and the blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. The day before his suffering and death, in order to manifest his infinite love to his disciples, and through them to all who would believe in him, to fill the hearts of his followers with the fire of this love, draw them to himself, make them joyful and blissful, and save them. He instituted these holy mysteries in which he spiritually and bodily in his entire being, he again lives among his people at that small moment, so sacred for all, the whole human family, our Savior took bread into his holy and venerable hands, and having lifted his eyes to heaven to you, God, his almighty Father, and giving thanks to you, he blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it, for this is my body, which is given for you. supper, taking this excellent chalice into his holy and venerable hands, again giving thanks to you. He blessed it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which shall be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. Therefore, in remembrance of this Christ, your Son, our Lord, and his blessed passion, resurrection, and his glorious ascension, we, your servants and faithful people, offer to your divine majesty from your own gifts and presence a pure offering, a holy offering, an immaculate offering, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to regard these offerings with favor and joy, and accept them as you receive the gifts of your just servant Abel, the sacrifice of our patriarch Abraham, and that which your high priest Melchizedek offered you, a holy sacrifice in the Magdalene Host. 
We humbly ask you, Almighty God, command that this offering be brought by the hands of your holy angel to your high altar into the presence of your divine majesty, that we who receive the most sacred body and blood of your Son from this altar may be filled with every blessing and grace through the same Christ our Lord. Lord, remember your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and who now sleep in peace. It is my intention today that we remember our U.S. servicemen who lost their lives in Afghanistan, as well as all the innocent people from Afghanistan who sought freedom. Let us also pray in addition for what will take place in southern Louisiana and pray that God would protect and watch over all those who will suffer within the next two days. Lord, for the departed, we pray that all who rest in Christ may find a place of refreshment, delight, and peace through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. And grant us your sinful servants who hope in the greatness of your mercy some part in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs and all your saints who shed their blood for your name. Their hearts were always open to justice and mercy and with lives patterned after their divine master merited eternal joy. Numbers in their company, Lord, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses. Through Christ our Lord, amen. By whom you always create, sanctify, revive, bless, and freely give us all these good things. Through him, with him, in him. All honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, in the unity with the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray, instructed by our Savior's teaching, and then following the divine example, we say with confidence, our Father, we are to think together with your blessed apostles, Peter and Paul's also Andrew, and all the saints, grant us peace in our day, that being supported by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and secure from all disturbance through the same Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. 
And now, Lamb of May, the commingling and consecration of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ help us to receive it to everlasting life. Amen. Lamb of God, who take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, who take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, who take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ. You said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Do not look upon our sins, but upon the faith of your church and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, for you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, your death brought life to the world by your holy body and blood. Free us from all our sins and from every evil. Keep us faithful to your teachings, and never let us be parted from you, who lives and reigns God forever and ever. Amen. May the partaking of your body and blood, Lord Jesus, not be cause for our judgment or condemnation, though we are unworthy to receive this great sacrament, through your loving kindness may become our safeguard and healing remedy, our saving master. Awaken in all of us, living faith, fervent love, worship, adoration, and the holy longing. Through this communion, make us your willing servants, zealous to fulfill your holy will. May it at last unite us entirely with you. Our Lord and our God, grant us who lives and reigns with God the Father in unity with the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We will take the bread of heaven and we will call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. My dear brothers and sisters, prior to receiving Holy Communion, for those of you who will not be receiving the stace, the Holy Eucharist sacramentally, let us offer this prayer. Let us pray. Most loving Jesus, I adore you in the most blessed sacrament in which you are truly present. I love you above all things and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart and heal my soul. I embrace you and unite myself with you. May I never be separated from you. Inflame my heart with the fire of your love, my Lord and Savior. Amen. May the body of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul unto life everlasting. Amen. What shall I return unto the Lord for all the graces he hath rendered unto me? I will take the chalice of salvation, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. With high praise will I call upon him, and I shall be saved from all my enemies. May the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul unto life everlasting. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Lord, I am not worthy of you, Son of the Lord, and I hold you in my soul to be healed. Receive the body of the Lord Jesus Christ.
take the time to come around the altar where the celebrant would celebrate Holy Mass and to look that beyond the altar is this church. You know, it was a very special day and not only blessing new vestments and consecrating a beautiful seven-foot Goshen stu uh, stone blue altar top, but through the efforts of our parish chairperson, Eric de Brinzi, we were able to come together and to be able to dedicate that altar. I did not put the chalice back in front of the tabernacle because this has a story. Wayne, as you remember, this chalice was completely black. And it wasn't a good patina. It looked like it was completely worn out. This, as I had said to other people, that when you deal with the chalice, you just don't throw it into the trash. Because like an altar, a chalice is consecrated. And so a couple of days ago, prior to the celebration of our 92nd anniversary, I received a call from my dear brother, Kurt Merger from Florence. And he said, Father, I know that in conjunction with your 92nd anniversary, you asked if I could possibly try to clean the chalice that you gave unto me. This, my brothers and sisters, covered with black, covered with stain, is the first chalice of our parish. This chalice, with my understanding, was a part of our church when it was first dedicated in 1930 less than nine months after our first Mass on August 25th, 1929. Not bad for a chalice, 92 years of age. I wish I could hold it as well. But it, the chalice is a part of the altar. Yesterday, our diocesan mission, so uh, along with Father Senior, Father Father Sol Bishop, Father Adam Chandreski, and Sophie and Justin Betty gathered around our altar altar. We wish you our prayers and during the end of the mess we want to celebrate it. You know, Bishop kind of joked around with us and he said, you know. When I go to consecrate your altar, altar, of course you know that we do it with the anointing of Holy Chrism. And Holy Chrism is a special oil. There are three oils in our church. There is the oil of the sick, there is the oil of catechumen that baptized children receive once and only other and no other time, and there is Holy Chrism. Holy Chrism that is received by individuals at their baptism, their confirmation, and when an individual is ordained to the priesthood. But Chrism is also used for the consecration of a chalice, a patent, and in the case yesterday with our altar. So Bishop said, you know, I'm going to put the, the oil down on the altar, and the hard part is going to be to call upon our clergy to actually clean the altar. And so not only did he mark in five spots the altar, which represents for me the five wounds of Christ, his arms, his legs, and his heart. And with the anointing of five places on the cross, Bishop asked me, do you have extra chrism? And I said, yes, Bishop, of course I do. 
And he proceeded to take a bottle of chrism and spread it throughout on three places, signs of the cross, and rubbed his hands over the entire altar. You can't get much holier than that. And you know, our Lord talked about the need for having a oneness. And it is our hope and belief that with the dedication, the consecration of our altar, that we might be able to make our parish stronger. Yesterday we celebrated the anniversary of a parish. And after 92 years, we had a reading that is taken from the Gospel according to St. John, which was a final prayer that Jesus prayed unto the Father. He had already prayed for. He said that they all may be one, as Father, you are in me, and I am you, that they may be one in us. So again, my dear brothers and sisters, um, I have one minute, and I've, our Mass has lasted for 59 minutes, so I've got another 30 seconds. I ask that you continue in prayer and pray for the growth and for the expansion of our parish. I know yesterday talking to the bishop, when, he was, when I was called upon to offer final words, I kind of shared with him a story about the Field of Dreams ball field that I had a chance when I went out to Iowa to see a dear friend of mine that I was able to go to the Field of Dreams and that on that ball field in Dyers, Iowa, I was able to collect around home plate gravel and sand where children played. If you've ever seen the film, Filled of Dreams, you know what I'm talking about. And there was a part toward the end where through the cornfield, the character had his father come through and ask the question, are we in heaven? And it was said, we are not in, necessarily in heaven as we understand it, but we are in Dyersville, Iowa. And with the dedication as Bishop kind of followed up on my comments, the question was asked, are we in heaven? And I said, Bishop, we are in South Deerfield. And so the theme of the movie, Fill the Dreams, if they build it, they will come. We should never lose heart because we have a uniqueness in all the Christendom to actually manifest and to magnify the Lord according to our denomination. So again, I thank you for giving me the opportunity to offer a few words, and I ask that you please, if you have the opportunity to come by the altar, and to be able to offer your peace and blessings. We will conclude this morning after just two more announcements, a morning prayer. Um, we are only two weeks away, approximately, for our chicken barbecue. And um, if possible, please, to give support. We are also asking for um, raffle prizes. Sue, is there anything that you would like to add? Um, just that I have extra dinner tickets if anyone is interested, and I also have raffle tickets every Sunday. Okay. Again, I ask that today you remember in prayer all those who have lost their lives in the recent bombing act, the Kabul airport, or Kabul, and 13 U.S. servicemen, not only men, but also a dear woman, a mother. And we pray that we might be able to find peace within our world as we remember all those who have lost their lives. And for all our intentions, may we turn unto the altar of God and offer this prayer.
In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, and we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, it is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. And for the repose of the souls of all lost and departed loved ones, eternal rest, grant unto their souls, O Lord. Let light and perpetual shine upon them. May they all rest in peace. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.